Good day everyone and welcome to this video. We are making a Java Bingo game in console window using math.random and two day arrays that represent the elements of the bingo card. This program will show the, the bingo card and random numbers to every letter in bingo with a specific range and a random roll that will be triggered by the end if the number have a similar in the bingo card. It will be replaced by an X in the bingo card and the program will repeat until the player match the numbers diagonally, vertically, or horizontally. And the program will show you if you want to play again. For further explanations and to better understand with what our program does, thus, here is Lawrence Tamayo to represent this part of our code. Thank you. I'm Lawrence Tamayo and I will explain this lineup code from 1 to 40. First, we are importing this to Java util utilities, which is necessary for our program because we need the user input and random variables that will be the elements of the bingo card. In line 4 to 6, we initialize random and scanner for our program and the matrix of the bingo card, which is the 2D array. Now, I, I will explain the code in this method, bingo, in, in line 8. In this method, we initialize num as the temporary container that will provide the elements for the matrix and run num that represents as the minimum and maximum and this boolean data type for the conditional statements inside the loop, which is this tree here. To input the random elements in a specific range inside the array, we use nested for loop and inside is another nested for loop. This is the loop that I'm talking about and this one. For the first nested for loop with index and row that is initialized, it is used for inputting random numbers with a specific range and the random will be increased for every loop that represents the range of the random number and the inner. Nested for loop is used for checking if the random number is already used and will randomize a new number. If it's already used, um, as for the if else statement inside the inner nested for loop, which is this, is used if the number is already used and loop again to generate a random number until it's unique. Then inner nested for loop, which is this, is used if the number is already used and loop again to generate a random number until it's unique. Then the inner nested for loop will end if the number is unique, if the do while loop is false. This is the do while loop that we, we initialize. Then the first nested for loop will input a random number in the specific row and column in the today array, which is the number will be inputted here based on the loops that the nested for loop done. After the second for loop, to loop 5 times, which is this, run num will be incremented by 15, which is this, run num represents the maximum and minimum of the random numbers. This loop will do that all for 25 times until all the numbers are unique. And as for this, this part, we change its element for later use because it represents the free part in the bingo matrix. That's all. I'm Mark Vincent A. Famodula. We'll present how we solve the free space in the center of the bingo card. In the line 40, we declare the value of our 2D array, which is the board 2, 2 represent the index of row and column. And the value is 104 points in free space. And the next is printing the title of our bingo using string for each loop. To print the string title one, then we declare a nested for loop to display the bingo card. The clear bingo card that will mark in the repetition of the program in the inner loop, the declaration if condition will represent the index two in the row and column to print the free space in the center on the bingo card. Then the condition else to print the unique random number in each number in the bingo. The outer loop to print the line to avoid the continue the repetition of the random numbers and the next press is Luis Angelo Baguios. Um, thank you Mr. Mark Vincent Famodulan and to continue I am Luis Angelo Baguios and I'm presenting how the random number become unique in the bingo card and in the line 64 we declare the while loop with the condition true to repeat the question infinitely if the user want to roll a number 
it will go in the first if else statement to randomly call a number from 1 to 75 that not less that, that not less than 0 if the user choose no it will go to the second condition which terminate the while loop in line 64 if the user input the invalid characters in the scanner and the loop in the other condition will process and display not in range the system will continue if the user input yes then the bingo will continue and the bingo card will print the random numbers to 75 and also print the bingo card. I'm Mallory Joseph Parardonez and I'm presenting the marking in the bingo card. This start with the line 90 and the last we done in the, the bingo title will print and we make the nested loop for row and column index. Then inside the inner loop, we make the if statement for index center. The first if else statement will print free because of the condition if both are true. The condition is only true in the array row 2 and column 2 to print free. Then the next which is else if in the line 104 to 106 is for printing x, which will be discussed by Edson Deontoy. I'm Edson Deontoy. If random match in a number in the bingo matrix and make Ellen up the specific row equal 100. Next, else if statement from the line 109 to 111. This statement print x in the matrix specific element already match else else line 113 to 115. Print the specific row and column matrix match with random number after the inner loop. It will add new line so that output will be five by five and repeat again until all elements or X are printed. I'm Vince Gerald and Kenyatta and I'm explaining the line 123 to 125. We initialize these identifiers and base their names on how it's used. We created a nested for loop that will loop 25 times using the row and columns of the bingo matrix. Inside the inner for loop, there are if statements only because all the outputs must go to each if statements to check if the condition is true. Remember, in the previous discussion, we changed the elements of a specific row and column in the bingo matrix to 100. And for the next presenter, I'm Tristan Prince F. Brillantes again. And if any of these initialized variables reach 500 points, the other nested for loop outside this loop will check if any of these identifiers reach 500. The program will print if what is the completed pattern, if it's diagonal, vertical, or horizontal. Prints bingo and run finished method that will print the congratulations statement. Thank you. I'm Raylan Saif M. Laminero. I will present the main method. In this method, we build an interface, which is the bingo menu, this is. And after that, we declare an infinite while loop. Inside the infinite while loop, the user will get asked enter the number here. If the user input is equal to 1, the system will print the bingo method will get called. And after finishing the bingo method, we declare again an infinite while loop in line 8 to 198. Inside this while loop, the user will get asked if they want to play again. If the user is equal to yes, the bingo game will get called again. If the user input is no, the system will print thank you for playing. And then it will break the infinite while loop in line 298. And after that, it will also break the while loop in this line which is number 289 and if the user is input is invalid it, the user will get us again if they want to play again and up, after this input is equals to one the else if if the user is in, equals to two the system will print goodbye and break the input while loop in this line which is 289 and if the user is input is invalid the user will get the system will will print if in the is invalid input i'm katherine Aria and i will playing the game first is we run it this show the bingo menu that is given the choices of one to start the game and two is the exit so let's start with the one after the user choose one there is a bingo card that is shown and 
we have the choices if we want to roll if this is a yes or a no i enter a yes and the method will produce a specific number or the randomizer that is equal to one and if the randomizer didn't see any of the equivalent number in the bingo card the program will continue and no mark will be in the bingo card then we continue continue to say the yes and still the number five is not shown then we continue the game then if there is a certain number that is identify identical to the bingo randomizer and in the bingo card it will x or mark it as an x then we still continue to play until it congratulate us then after we play and hit a horizontal vertical or diagonal set of mark then the program will show that you are already bingo and congratulate you. I am eligible and I will explain if the user input in program is number two, then it will print goodbye and it will finish the program. But what if the user input is none of the choices? Example, if the user input number three, then it will print an invalid input. Please input number one if you want to start a game and number two if you want to finish the game. Okay. I will input number one. It will display again the bingo cards and it will ask, do you want to roll? And if you answer the no, it will print loser. And it will ask again to user again to if you want to play again. Okay, but if we, if the user input the nine of the choice again, it will print again the invalid input. This input yes or no. Then it will the user is input the no. The program will print the thank you for playing and the, it will finish the program. Thank you.